Hello everyone and welcome to another Stormworks video. I hope you're all well and staying safe in these tough times. Now in this video we're going to be having a look at my new train that we've gone and built here in Stormworks. This is the second train of the New Jersey network that we're going to be rolling out very soon on my dedicated server. So I thought we'll go ahead and we'll have a look around this train, look at how I built it, look at a couple of the components and the features with it and then we're actually going to go ahead and drive it in the world of Stormworks. Now, if you're enjoying this videos, comment below and what else you'd like to see any of my future videos. While you're there, don't forget that like and subscribe button and click the little bell icon to be notified of my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So with that all said, let's get straight into it and get started with this video. And spawning in the train, we're here at the Komodo terminal. Now you can see this train was designed on the high-speed British uh, Intercity 125. Took a lot of inspiration from that train. Uh, and you can see, I think the design came out really well. I had a lot of fun building this uh, and doing a whole bunch of different things to it. A lot of the logic is the same logic that I've used in my London Tube Siemens train. Uh, and we'll go through all of it. They, in this variant, you can see there's two cabs here and there's also the two um, engines or the two cars, uh, power cars in the front and at the rear of the train. Now, talking about the actual train engine design, uh, you can see that underneath the train we have the fuel tanks. There are no engines underneath this one like the London tube. The actual engines are inside the actual train itself. Uh, so we just have fuel underneath here. Along with that is a couple auxiliary batteries and we also have some medium electric motors. This is what actually powers the system itself. We'll have a look at the engine room uh, later on when we look through the actual engine itself and along the outside uh, just some detailing out the back with some paint blocks uh, in the front we have some uh, just the front connectors and also a camera and in here there's actually a compartment that goes and opens up now on the real one this compartment actually goes and opens upwards and there is the front connector system here at the front. Uh, this one I haven't added in just yet. I'm thinking of doing that so I definitely would like to hear in the comments below uh, what you guys think and if you think if I should add in the connector system here at the front or the coupling system here at the front. Uh, anyway, even if we don't, I think it's a cool thing to have this little extra compartment here at the front. Uh, I think it's a cool addition. Now closing that off, a uh, pretty straightforward design here in the front. Uh, I love the use of the new wedges. I had a lot of fun building that. Uh, I think it looks really realistic, realistic here at the front too. Unfortunately, I couldn't add the horns in the front uh, that is on the real train just because I don't have a sloped wedge that looks quite nice there. Uh, so I've just kept it black as you can see here. It's got a really cool design here at the front. Uh, going around, there's not much else. Uh, you can go and get into the main cab pretty easily just by jumping up here. You don't need to use any handles or ladders or anything else like that. Uh, a little bit of detailing just around here. There is some built-in lighting, automatic lighting system, and you can screen the monitors on already. There's, and there's heating for the driver, uh, driver's seat and co-driver, and jumping in pretty basic in things to use the train. I'll come back to that later on when we actually start driving it. Uh, but going into some of the detailing that I've done, the first compartment here is the electrical compartment. Now, very similar to the original, this was the electrical compartment. Uh, you can see we have our engine stats, uh, battery also, and then also we can turn off any of these things that we want to. So we can turn off the light systems in the whole train. We could turn off the engines, we could turn off the heaters, the sensors, all the screens. It's up to us. Uh, we also have a backup battery if we need to. Going along, there's some nice detailing. Uh, I went did quite a bit of detailing in here. Tried to make it as realistic as possible. Uh, the engine room, we have two large diesel engines in here. These actually just recharge the batteries and the batteries is what actually powers the car here. Um, I thought it's the most efficient way of doing a train, to be honest. Uh, and then going into the back section, we have a little bit of a cargo area here at the back uh, with doors that open out on either side to go and load cargo if you want to. It's completely up to you. Uh, going along, you can actually walk into the cabs here, uh, passenger cabs, so you can see a little walkway where we can get in and out. These doors actually open automatically when you're at a station. Uh, they have some built-in screens and so on and so forth uh, that you can go and activate. So if we go to the front here and say that this is the master car, whatever happens here will then go and get onto the screens at the rear of all the other cabs and also the other power car at the back which is quite cool and you'll see that if we just walk through here take a seat and have a look on the outside you can see the lights and the screens everything is turned on which is pretty cool uh what else 
in here we have some passenger area so you can go and put some cargo and everything else you want to in here uh, moving along some seating with some heating underneath all the seats that also turns on automatically some air conditioning fake air conditioning at least built-in lighting built-in screens saying where we're going what stop we're at the train number the time quite useful some more luggage areas and also a little toilet I tried to design this as accurate as I could, uh, obviously with the limitations of Stormworks. And you can carry on just walking through and going along to the rest of the cabs, all the doors keep on opening and closing as they need to. Uh, now going to the engine, to the main car, let's have a look at how this drives. Now it's pretty straightforward, um, I tr obviously this is specifically being built for my automatic rail system, uh, so there's a lot of things regarding that. But if you didn't want to use it with the rail system, you just want to use it like a normal train, you can. It's really easy to do that. All you have to do is make sure you've got Master Slave on. Uh, you can see we have our different stat screens here with our engines, fuel, RPS. Uh, you can switch to a map, which you can zoom in and out with over here. You can even switch, oops, you can even switch to the camera at the front if you need to and do a whole bunch of different things. There's a couple things that are related to my automatic system uh, that we're not going to be looking at right now. Look at that in the next video that I have part three of my rail system, which is coming out later this week. Uh, we also have some screen brightness, so we can decrease the screen brightness here if we need to. So you can see the screen brightness goes and decreases or increases as we need to. It's quite a nice system. I like it, especially for nighttime driving. Uh, let's go back to our main screen speed very important of course uh, and that's pretty much about it we can change the track if we need to using the hotkeys uh, we can put low beam lights on the front uh, high beam lights we can release the connector to the cab the back there uh, we can pretty much increase throttle here and decrease throttle as we need to brakes are automatic which is quite a nice feature uh, you can obviously put them on manually if you need to and it pretty much just drives as a normal train you can just see increased speed doors closed lights go on white at the front here at the rear of the train we will have red lights and if we put it in a reverse from this or we go into the other master cab and drive from there you'll notice the lights go on white there and red on the side so that's automatic so it takes a lot of complication out of people having to remember to do that uh, and yeah pretty much drives quite well uh, engines are automatic too whenever we need power they turn on they do run at a very low rps six rps on both diesel engines uh, they produce 400 watts between them so you get quite a lot of power out of it and the fuel is going to last forever pretty much uh, i think here to Sawyer is about 5 to 10% fuel, depending on how quick you're going. Uh, top speed at the moment is around 120, 125. I have limited that to 0.4, so about 40% is the maximum on our throttle. I can increase that. So let me know in the comments if you think we should go quicker, but I think that's more or less realistic to the original Intercity. Um, what else do we have here? That's pretty much about it, really. There's not much, it's not that complicated, you can just use it. Uh, you can see it's quite a good looking train, I think. Uh, once again, you guys let me know what you think. Um, in terms of like the master slave system, it's quite smart. You can see all the little cabs have little radio antennas, they talk to each other. One train becomes the master, everything else becomes a slave by default. Uh, and then whatever happens in one train replicates to the other ones. If the train is facing a different direction, it goes and inverts everything. So you can see here uh, in the rear cab that's currently in reverse, in the front cab we're in forward. So it, you know, it it's quite smart and just it just goes and works. We can kill the throttle, which kills the engines. We can just now coast to our next stop. Uh, brakes are not applied currently at the moment. When we come to a stop, it will go and apply those brakes for us. Yeah, that's pretty much about it for the Intercity train. Um, I think it's a cool train. As I said, I had a lot of fun building it, especially with the wedges and things, trying to make it really cool and slimline. But you guys let me know in the comments what you think of the train. Also, maybe what you would like me to add onto the train. What are the features or any other cool things I should add on, especially about the front coupler hidden under, inside that little compartment, if I should add that in. Uh, and any other detail that you would maybe like to see inside of the passenger cabs. I'd like to hear that in the comments below. So I think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found some entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.